So it looks like ZWO is releasing a new version of the AM5 called the AM5N. I just got done watching a couple videos. I highly suggest you do go check out Lucomatico and Queeve's videos so you can see the differences between the two mounts. I'm gonna tell you as an, a former owner of an AM5 and a future owner of definitely the AM5N, why I would purchase it. And definitely in Luke's videos, he does the best job, I think, of demonstrating the reasons why. So I'm Chad, this is the Easy Astro Images channel, and we're gonna make things definitely easier today because that is what the AM5N is doing. First, a big shout out to my channel members now. I can't believe how fast it is increasing. So if you wanna support what we are doing here on the channel, there is a link to that below. Definitely support all of your other favorite YouTubers as well. So it's obviously a pre-order type of deal. Prices are about the same compared to the N and the old AM5. And really what you can do, they're actually in stock now to order. That is awesome. So it's a little bit bigger, uh, 5.5 kilograms versus five kilograms. So that way you got a little bit more beefed up stuff it seems like inside. So that way you can carry a couple more kilograms of payload without using a bar or counter rates, which is always a good thing, even though I never really got to that point. And I've seen people with full Rasa 8 setups, which weigh a ton on top of these things running fine. So along with it being beefed up, and the gears and stuff probably being redone inside. It looks like they were able to decrease the overall periodic error. Now, I know this is a big thing with people to like look at your chart, see what you got. My chart with my AM5 was one of the worst ones that I had ever seen online and the thing still worked flawlessly. So don't get all caught up in that. Where you should get caught up in is the mechanical improvements that they have made to this mount. So the two biggest things that I love Three biggest things, obviously you've got the power throughput coming through the saddle now, so you can totally shorten up your cables instead of kind of having cables kind of like dangling around. That is a huge improvement. Second and third whatever is gonna be the altitude and the azimuth adjustments. So on the altitude, they actually shortened the bar on the back that you turn to make your altitude adjustments. And they also put the marks on the back which just kind of makes sense because it's always stupid to turn around to the side and adjust, you know, your altitude adjustment. So that's cool. And that long bar, I mean, just an inch or however shorter they made that damn thing. I think Luke measured it. It would get caught up on stuff. I actually uh, took mine and stuck it up and epoxied it into like an up position once I found my setup because I always used it here and I never used it anywhere else. So the other thing is on the actual azimuth adjustments. So it looks like they moved those out a, a little bit. So that way you can kind of get away with a little bit more of a polar alignment accuracy. And sometimes if my mount had shifted a little bit or I set it down, was out, out of it, alignment in my driveway, even though I've got rough markings out there on where to set my tripod so it's pointing towards Polaris. You can kind of run out and those would bottom up against the bottom of the mount and the tripod uh, pretty easily sometimes, you know, if you're off. So it's nice to have those spaced out and have a little bit more adjustments on them. And they got rid of the most annoying thing, the biggest improvement on the AM5N is the locking bolts on the azimuth. They got rid of those. Underneath, Luke shows that they use basically a tension spring and screw type of adjustment that will hold pressure against the actual pin on there. And this was a big problem on my EQ6R Pro. The EQ6R Pro over time um, of all of the bolts pressing against it super hard would actually loosen that screw and you know I would Loctite it and have to go on there and adjust it every once in a while to tighten it up. The AM5, the problem is, is when you're trying to do a really precise polar alignment, it would take way longer than it should have for like a ZWO product, right? That should just work perfectly and easily. You would get it dialed in and then you would lock it and it would click out of place. And if you tried to cheat and lock it like three quarters of the way or maybe all the way and then turn those adjustments, sometimes it would work and sometimes it wouldn't. So you were really fooling around a lot trying to get like an ultimate polar alignment. So having this mechanism will just be 
like way better. So I see nothing but good improvements here. I don't care about cases. Uh, I don't really care about the finish or the cartoons or anything else like that. Looks like it's a little bit sleeker the way they kind of cut some of the edges around it. Obviously it's still red, which is a cool thing, but I would definitely recommend the N and not worry about going to the AM5. As long as this thing is running the same firmware and a lot of the same stuff, which it should be, there isn't any information out there yet on like ZWO forums. When the AM5 came out, we had a lot of teething problems, especially revolved around ASCOM. You had to cheat like things with Meridian flips and everything like that. Worked great with the ASI Air. They did finally fix all that stuff. So I'm assuming that they're just going to carry all that same ASCOM driver technology into the AM5N and everything should work good and smooth. Now you're always going to pay a price for being an early adopter. That's kind of up to you if you wanted to. But for me, if I was going to buy my mount, which I'm going to here very shortly in the next couple months, um, that is definitely the way to go. Like there's no reason to go with the AM5. So I would probably say that we might see some clearances, maybe some lower prices on the AM5. They seem to be out of stock, um, uh, at least on a Gina in a couple places. So that probably means that they're not coming back into stock. They've got, I believe, the kit with the tripod, which is always a nice thing to have. Um, actually, that says 2024 version. So yeah, the original AM5 looks like it might be gone or going for good, and we might not have a choice. Um, obviously, there's other strain wave mounts that are out there for more money. But I mean, I had such a great experience with the AM5, and I know others have that if you want to use an ASI Air or if you want to use Nina and all that kind of stuff and get just a great, no hassle, performing budget mount that will suit you for the rest of your astrophotography career, quite honestly then there's just no reason not to pick this up. The upgrades in my mind are a very nice upgrade, not needed, but very welcomed and will definitely improve all the little things that annoyed the hell out of me about my AM5. So I hope this helps you guys out. We'll talk to you guys later. Peace.